Hello friends, welcome back to this new episode and in this episode we will design our application navbar and we will try to implement our login system user login system using mysql database so let's get started but before starting if you are new on my channel please make sure to do subscribe on my channel so i am going back to my eclipse id and uh, this is our project and it's running let's uh, open my browser and you can see this is hello world is running then i will go to the bootstrap official website and i am going to use uh, bootstrap uh, default navbar because i am not focusing much on designing i just uh, focusing on functionality so just i am going to copy this code and going to paste here get rid of this hello world and paste the navbar code and hit control s to save and refresh the browser our navbar is visible but we don't need this kinds of design we just need to uh, minimize something from here we don't need this uh, form element and this uh, navbar should be right side so ml auto check it out the menu item goes to the right side but uh, i think it will be best if I put it inside a container. Inside the nav, create a deep class container. Deep class container. Now it uh, looks perfect. Let's uh, change our brand name and this uh, menu item. Now our brand name will be e commerce cart or shopping cart. commerce shopping cart and it will indicate our index dot uh, and let's uh, come out to this section don't need this span element it will be our home and home will also indicate our index dot and uh, second on will be our cart page here we can mention our cart dot page and also we don't need any drop down so this is disabled so cut it and then order space it's indicating our order space orders.jsp just to double check our page names orders.jsp i'm going to copy and oh sorry then we need a, a logout page First, it's make it empty and another page login page. So, login.jsp. Now, let's uh, check out page uh, cut page cut.jsp page, then orders.jsp page, and this is our logins.jsp page. I'm going to close this tab. So, we need this navbar in every page. So, what I can do or what you can do you just uh, copy this code and paste it everywhere but I'm not going to do this I'm going to make an include page and then just include that JSP file in every page so create a new page inside include folder JSP file and say it navbar dot JSP Click on finished and next. Going to get rid of all of this and just uh, copy the control X, paste it here. Now just uh, include that uh, navbar inside the body. So here just say navbar.jsp and check it out. It's working or not. Wow, oh, it's working. There is no change. So just uh, copy this on and paste it your every page get rid of this hello world and also in order base get rid of this hello world and paste your include file save all go to your browser and check refresh it go to home page it's working go to cut page number is available go to order space number is available 
and go to login page also number is available all right our number design is done and now we need to implement our login system so for login system we need our mysql connector jar file so how to get that and remember that we are using a maven project so just uh, go to google and search mysql jdbc connector maven and it will recommend you this link go to the first and here is uh, many updated version so i'm going to use uh, 0.23 just copy this code and go back to your project now let's open your pom.xml file so go to java resource and libraries and uh, now you can see that we have only tomcat library and jre libraries but we don't have uh, mysql jdbc jar so when we will add it in our pom.xml file it will download that jar file and will include into our project underneath your packaging so write uh, dependencies dependencies and inside the dependencies just paste the code you have copied from maven we are formatting and you can see that it's validating our project and building our project now you can see that there is external dependency maven dependencies if you expand it you can see that we have our mysql connector the jar file so now we can connect our project with a mysql i'm going to close it so now it's time to design our database let's uh, open my mysql workbench here i have already created the database and tables i used that in our project so here i have already created that database and tables but uh, uh, don't worry i will give this uh, database creation and files link in the description you, you can go to my github repository and from there you can download this project source code so here i have a user table and inside a user table i have one column is id name email and password just a simple user table and i have included one user using hard coded because i'm not going to implement register functionality so i just include one user hard coded and in products uh, i have id name category price and images and in orders i have order id product id user id quantity and order date so that's the basic structure of the table so i'm going to minimize it and please uh, check the link in the description to get the source code so now we need to implement our user login functionality so that uh, first of all go to your source and create a package so i'm going to name it cn.tech tutorial click on finish so then i'm going to create a class is user model or you can say just user click on finish and inside our user we have a few variables let's check out database we have id name email and password so let's uh, say it uh, say private integer id then private string name then private uh, string email and private string password okay i'm going to make a, a constructor so you can just uh, control shift s alt shift s to insert code so here you can see that we have something it's like constructor using field so select all and generate and we also need a default constructor deselect all and a general and also we need getters and setters okay and also you can create a two string for debugging so this is our user class basic user class you can remove this uh, super because we are not extending any parent class 
and now we need to connect our project with our mysql database so i'm uh, okay i'm going to create another package dot uh, connection and here i'm also going to create another package is uh, calling model model and i'm going to move this user class inside our model package just to select it and drag and drop okay all right our model class has been moved to our model package and inside the connection i am going to create a, another class called uh, db connection uh, db con db con and click on finish and here uh, take a private static uh, and it's a connection type connection equal to null and we need to import this connection from our mysql connector so this one is java.sql now create a static method to call it from anywhere static connection which will return a connection get connection first of all uh, check it if uh, connection is not null or is equal to null if connection equal to null then we will create our connection if not we will not create our connection we will just return the our old connection so here we have a class for name dot for name and this is our mysql driver name so com dot mysql mysql dot cj dot jdbc dot driver d will be uppercase and it's asking a throw a declaration so you can add it class not found exception now we have a method is a driver manager driver manager dot get connection and here we are going to pass our jdbc connection url what is your jdbc connection url which is jdbc clone mysql clone mm, which is a local host local host and its port is 3306 default port and here it's our database name which is e-commerce card e-commerce dash card and we are going to pass our username root and my localhost password uh, is uh, almamon at one two three so this is our jdbc url so it's a uh, giving an error because um, we need to throw an exception which is sql exception okay and assign this on to our connection and now it's asking a return statement because it's returning a connection so then just return that connection just do a printout to check in our console that it's connecting or not so now check it out it's successfully connected with our mysql workbench or not so just come back here and do uh, a tag jsp tag and just uh, call that db connection db con dot get connection and do a out dot print i hope print this one save it and uh, go back to your project and refresh go to home page and you can see that you get a object so that means our uh, our project has been connected with our database successfully and here you can see in console let's uh, create a database object for our project so now go to your package and click create a new package which is uh, you can say DAO and click on finish so inside your DAO package create a class which is user DAO and click on 
finish okay here i'm uh, going to define some variables which is a private connection because when we will call this method call this class or we, when we will create the instance of this class we need to pass a connection first so it's giving an error just import java sql and also we need a private uh, string which is query and then prepared statement private prepared prepared statement pst and result set private uh, re result set rs now i'm going to create a constructor so control s and go to constructor using field deselect all just select connection and click on generate remove this uh, super method and now i'm going to create a method to log in our user so which is public and it's return a user type so that user we have created in user model and uh, let's say user login and pass two parameter string email and string password and check uh, user initially user make it null and return that user and just import the user from model package now i am going to use trycast to exception handling and we can say e dot paint structures or also we can say system dot out dot uh, print uh, e dot get matches so first of all write a mysql query to check uh, that our user exists in our database or not the credential he provided query equal so select all from our user table user table and uh, give a condition where mail equal to what and password equal to what so go back to my mysql workbench and you can see this is our user table and from this user table i am checking the credential email and password same as the column name so because providing a higher condition so this uh, value is a question mark because we don't know this value we need to set those value using the ppid statement so pst equal this dot con dot ppid statement and pass the query and pst dot set string and it's just first position email so set is email and uh, pst dot uh, set string so second position will be password so uh, this is equivalent to write this way which is a password uh, sorry, which is email so you need to just write this uh, quotation So in this way, but uh, why I'm not using this method because uh, it uh, causes uh, sometimes SQL injection. So anyone can do SQL injection in your server. So uh, so that's why I'm not uh, going to using this method. I'm going to use the PPID statement. So it will prevent SQL injection in your database. So then uh, I'm checking that uh, PST dot execute query execute query which is return a result set so i am going to assign this to a result set we have set this is a result set we have set in top okay now i'm checking that if uh, rs 
has any object so rs dot next so it will return only one object so first element so i'm going to create user equal new user going to create instance of the user object so this is our user at first we define it null then we are going if there is a um, if there is an user then we are going to create a new user object and then set the user value in our user object so user dot set id which is rs dot get in int and column index we don't know the column index we know the column index but when you will uh, create a big database or table so you can't remember all the index number but you can uh, easily remember the column name which is id then user dot set uh, rs dot uh, get string which is a uh, name and user dot set pass is set email user dot set email so rs dot uh, get string and which is uh, email and here i am not going to return the user password because uh, it's uh, not a good practice for security purpose so i am done with this method so now i need a servlet to handle our form submit so how to do that i'm going to and i'm going to create another package whose name is uh, servlet okay click on finish inside the servlet i'm going to create a servlet and i'm going to name it login servlet click on next and i'm going to edit the url mapping click on edit just uh, say user dash login user dash login and click on ok next and do post method and do get method so click on finish i'm going to remove some unnecessary code and here you can see that uh, uh, this uh, our uh, do get method if someone access our method using just typing the url it will redirect us to our response response dot send redirect which is our login dot this or you can just uh, remove this to get method so the source code you will get in inside our inside of my github repository and there i remove this do get method i didn't use that you can also do that and you can also do this because of security okay in inside the do post method um, i am going to set our response type it's uh, very important response dot set uh, content uh, type i'm going to set it uh, text uh, slash uh, html and i'm going to set uh, charge set utf8 and going to use try cache inside the try i'm going to write a print writer out equal to response dot get writer now i'm going to collect our user submitted email uh, now go to our login.jsp page where is our login.jsp page Just i'm going to close this on card we don't need navbar anymore we don't need user don't need db connection don't need user tau so this is our login.jsp page and here you can see that we have a form action and we made it empty because we didn't have any servlet name but now we have a servlet and what is the servlet url url is user dash login so i'm just going to copy it and paste it here so when we will submit this form it will go to login servlet so let's uh, uh, try to check it check it out that it's uh, hitting our login servlet or not 
so let's out dot print click on save and go back to your browser I'm going to close this tab and refresh it and go to login page and try some and you can see that user login is not available because uh, we need to restart our ser server so just uh, you can see in, you can terminate it on here or you can just click on run then it will pop up for project setup and restart it now check it out okay you can see this is login servlet so that means our action is working perfectly so there are many of students do that mistakes they don't check it out they just uh, uh, do the copy and paste and then they comment in the inbox uh, that uh, they send me message that uh, my login servlet not uh, found and i'm not uh, getting the data or something like that uh, it's not uh, uh, connecting with a database or the its login is failed there are some many questions they put in the comment without debugging your code so first please go to the follow the step by step and uh, debug your code that's you create that servlet and it's working or not you have to find it out you have to figure it out why it's not finding so that means our um, uh, servlet is working so now I'm going to grab the user data which is uh, submitting from our form so first one is which one will be string email so email equal to request response not response it's request request dot uh, get parameter and what is the prime parameter actually the, this parameter is our input field name we have set in our login.jsp page so go back to your login.jsp page and here you can see that we set a name here which is login.email just i'm going to copy it and paste it here okay and just i'm going this line copy and paste it for password which is password and i think this one is login password just double check which is uh, login password okay now check that we are getting that email password from the form or not so i'm going to out dot uh, print uh, which is uh, email email plus password and save it and uh, go to your and refresh it and try to submit it and you can see it's empty we are not getting anything here just uh, just uh, go back to your project restart your server try anything and you can see you are getting the email and you are getting the password now I'm sure that I am getting the form email and password properly so i'm going to create our user dao object instantiate our user dao so u dao equal to new user user dao and this dao class need a connection so who will provide us the connection our dbcon class will provide our connection so dbcon dbcon dot get connection and you can see there is a o because we need to throw or catch our exceptions we can sound with multi try cache so e dot paint structures or we can throw the exception as you want so we get our uh, user dao object so u dao we can call its method so u dao dot uh, user login and pass the email and password as a parameter and uh, what is returning it's returning a user type so user type user we need to import our user Oops, uh, sorry i forgot to import. 
click on this ball and import uh, that cn tutorial dot model now check this object is exist or not so when there so it will call this user login method uh, if i open it declaration this is a user login method so when there is a user it will return a user object so now i can check that uh, this uh, user object is uh, yeah, null or not so i can make condition if user is not equal to null so that's mean we have our user object or uh, there will be something like that incorrect username or password or there will be no user dot uh, print uh, just initially I'm doing a print um, which is um, user login and uh, then in our else statement I can say user login failed in uh, the cause will be incorrect username or password something like that so save it and restart your browser not sorry restart your server click on finish let's uh, enter some incorrect user password and you can you can see that user login is failed so and if you give the correct username password and it's also giving us user login failed maybe our password is wrong what is your password one two three four five six this is one two three four five six okay, then click on login it's also giving us a login failed okay try to refresh it it's giving us login failed so i think there is something wrong okay so you can see that okay we got unknown column which is password so we misspelled our column name so go to your user DAO and uh, change it to password okay so now you can see that i have an exception here and now I can check that in our console okay so you have to do that you can see that I uh, how many times I have sent the request so it's uh, printed that exception in our console okay so you need to take this in your mind the how to handle exception okay now check it's again that it's working or not I'm going back to my browser and um, refreshing the page uh, and uh, put the correct password okay user login that means uh, our credential is correct and it's successfully logged in in our system so after login what I want to do I want to send the user to index.jspps so let's say response dot send redirect index dot jspps and also i want to set this user value in our session to use in next so how to do that uh, ask a request request dot uh, get session and this one the attribute name is you can say auth or user so i'm going to say auth and then the user save it say almamon and say the password okay i'm done that means our login is working perfectly and we can access our user logged in user in from the session so in next video i will show that how to handle that users and uh, set some condition how to perform login logout and uh, also we will uh, hide this uh, navigation orders when user logged in he can see that menu if not he will not able to see this menu item so let's uh, check it out in next video i think this video goes too long so uh, i'm going to stop it here so see you in next video